So watch this. See, that one went off the court. That one went more towards the middle of the box. That one more into the body. This one deeper into the box. You see that? Hey, Pete here with Crunch Time Coaching. Today, I'm going to give you my complete guide to slice serves. Now, if you follow the instructions in this video just three times a week, you are going to be hitting the best slice serves of your life. So you're going to really enjoy it. I'm going to teach you five amazing things today. Amazing thing number one is I'm going to teach you how to quickly and easily develop a slice serve from scratch if you've never hit one or if you don't have a good one. Amazing thing number two is I'm going to teach you that curve, the way that that ball can move and slide off the court. I guarantee your opponents have never seen anything like it coming at them in their life. Amazing thing number three that I'm going to teach you is I'm going to teach you how to control your slice. A lot of people don't have good control over their slice. And then amazing thing number four is I'm going to teach you that it's just not about the out wide slice, that you can vary your slice all over the box. I'm gonna show you how to vary it all over the box with pace and spin. And then amazing thing number five is I'm gonna teach you how to hit your slice serve with power. A lot of people have what I call a helicopter slice at the recreational level, which doesn't really have a lot of power, just kind of floats and flutters around you're not going to do that after watching today's video, so let's get started. Okay, so if you don't have a great slice serve, if you don't know how to hit one or you want to get it a whole lot better, start with this first drill. I want you to get super close to the net. I want you to get in your chopper grip. You're basically just holding the racket, grabbing the racket, shaking hands, and making sure that the edge of your racket is going forward. So all you're going to start with Trust me, watch how simple this is to learn how to hit slice. All you're going to start with is taking the ball, putting it right in front of your racket, and tapping the edge of your tennis racket. Ooh, we just hit the camera there. So just do that for a little bit, tapping the edge. Just do that a handful of times. Now, watch how quickly you learn how to hit slice. Now, instead of going like this, you're going to go like that. See how I'm going from here to there. Here to there. And then if you just put the tennis ball in the way of this move, you're already hitting slice on the ball. If you have the correct grip, I'm holding it right there in the continental grip. And then I just slide it out. Notice how I went that way and the ball went that way. That had slice on it. We'll take a look from another angle. Okay, guys, let's take a look at this from the back. Now, again, when I do this with students who come out to train with me, we get a 100% success rate on this. Everybody learns how to hit with slice, even if they've never hit a slice before in their life. So you saw what I was doing before. Instead of going like this with the edge tap, I'm going out and watch how the ball slides. You can see that ball spin. You can hear it spin. So you just do that for a little bit, and then you're ready for the big show. The next thing I want you to do is get in the middle of the box and you're in the continental grip, and I want you to get the racket on the back side of your head. And here's the important thing. Make sure you don't do this. I see lots of recreational players, they do this, and then they're going to hit the slice with no pace. And I'll talk about why that happens later in this video. But you want to make sure you're getting right here. Notice how the elbow is sliding out that way. Love when Jeff Saldenstein calls it elbow the enemy. Then from there, you have to Feel that movement in the hip. The hip is going to slide this off the mountain. I like to pretend that this is a snow-capped mountain. And when I do this, it slides and creates an avalanche with the racket falling down. And then the hip is going to shoot not only around but up. So you don't want to make the mistake of having your hip just move around. Again, you're not going to hit with much pace. It goes down and then shoots up. And that's going to shoot your racket up. And then what you want to do is instead of hitting with the edge of the racket, you're throwing your racket out the same exact way and you're going to hit with a lot of slice. Okay, so just like that, you already have nice slice on the ball. Now, how do you create that insane curve 
that's going to drive your opponents crazy. This is one of my favorite serves to do. Now, first of all, whether you play singles or doubles in the beginning when you're practicing, I recommend that you start practicing in the doubles area of the court to the outside towards the singles line so you can start to see the potential that your slice serve can have and how far it can slide across the court. So that's just number one, just so you can see it. Now, the next thing is that you want to really focus on the tennis ball. And when you look at this ball, you want to think about hitting the outside of the ball and you want to forget about pronation. So many people keep asking, do you pronate on a slice? Do you pronate? Don't even worry or think about it. It doesn't matter. I'm telling you, if you just focus on the things I'm telling you to do and the feel that you're going to develop, then you're going to hit amazing slice. A lot of hitting the slice is all about feel. So we want to be aiming on the outside of the ball. We want to be imagining that first tip that I just gave you. Instead of coming like this with the edge, you're sliding it out. And then what I want you to start to really get a hold of so you can start to get that ball move across the court is grabbing the ball with the back hip and also the timing of the rotation in the shoulders. You're going to rotate your shoulders more. Again, remember it's up and around, just not around, because if you go around, you're not going to have pace on your serve. So you want to go up and around with your shoulders and you also want to throw that ball out to the side, okay? Because we want as much slice as we can on this. So we're not worried about the Pete Sampras or Roger Federer toss that's over the head. We want it out to the side. That's going to help you get slice really easy for free. You also want the ball bouncing into the court. You don't want the ball bouncing behind you because then you're in a fight with the hip. Remember, the more your hip can slide. I get so many people who have never hit a slice serve off the court to all of a sudden have the ball sliding way outside the doubles alley just with this tip alone, throwing the toss out in front. Don't take for granted how important that is because if I'm throwing the toss behind me in the and it lands in the green there, now I'm in a fight with the ball with my hips and I can't, it has plenty of slice on that, but it's not getting off the court. If I can throw the ball out in front and grab the tennis ball, really imagine this, grabbing the tennis ball with the hip and this back shoulder, the way they rotate and sync together. Now, you see how that ball's moving off the court. Now, you see how that ball, look at that ball. Did you, did you see that? Did you see that slice? That ball literally is over in the other court. You see, so just focusing on that will create that intense sliding curve. Now, the final element to this is focus on your follow through. You want a big scooping follow through. Don't decelerate. See, if you decelerate, it's gonna stop you from bringing that ball way off the court. If you stop and decelerate short, see that? <clears throat> then it's not gonna be moving. I see a lot of recreational players do that. They, they finish like here. You wanna finish way around big time. So, Imagine the swing path, it's kind of like a lasso. It's not swinging straight and through and stop. You're coming back here and then you're making this big hooking sweep way out there and around, okay? So watch how we do this. Watch this follow through, guys. A big sweeping follow through is gonna make that ball go off the court. I can do better than that. What did I not do? I didn't throw the ball far enough into the court and use my hips. There it is, oh, that would have been the best one. You see that? So even though we hit the net there, look how far that would have went off the court. Let me try that again. There it is. Look at that ball move off the court. I could do even better than that. Look at that. Okay, so you want a big sweeping follow through. Hey, if you're still watching this video and you're enjoying it and you're obsessed with tennis, I need you to help me get this video out to other totally obsessed tennis players by giving this video a like. Also, you want to subscribe. If you are obsessed with tennis and you want to improve your forehand, your backhand, your serve, your strategy, you want to subscribe because we're always coming out with new videos 
And when you do that, when you subscribe, you're gonna get a free 100 B2 puppy kisses from this guy. And I also have, oh, he can't wait. He sees it. He wants to go get it. He, B2, you wanna go get it? Okay. And then let me explain this to you. Another thing I'm gonna give you right now is I'm gonna give you a free seven day serve challenge that I've had thousands of people go through. It is literally everything I teach you on the serve if you came and work with me one on one. So go in the um, card section and the description box and sign up for my free seven day serve challenge. Let's get back to this tutorial. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about something very important is how do you control the slice serve? So many people cannot control the slice serve in the box. They can start to put curve on the ball, but if they're never going in the box, what's the point, right? So remember, you've never hit slice on your serve. You don't have much spin. So you've pretty much been serving like a dart player, right? Where you see the, the dart board right in front of you and you try and go directly at the board and hit your bullseye target. When you're hitting a slice serve, I want you to think of yourself like a professional bowler to where they don't just go right at the head pin, they curve it around. They anticipate that curve. They flirt with that gutter. It always goes in the gutter and then it hooks right in. You want to have that imagination on your slice serve so you can control it and it'll end up in the box. You see, if I just go and I have a flat grip serve and I kind of go like this, I go forward my swing pass like this and it isn't like this, then I, what I want to do is I want to aim right at the box to get the ball to go in the box, okay? So I'm aiming right at that box. Now, if I take that same philosophy and I aim right at the box, with my new awesome curving serve, and I aim right at the box, I'm the most likely gonna keep missing wide. You see that ball went wide? So I'm aiming right, and it keeps, I'll go way off. So what I want you to imagine, watch the swing path. You wanna imagine it's like a boomerang. You wanna imagine that you're hitting it over here, and it's sliding way out. Imagine this is the, 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 the path of the ball. Again, just use your imagination. And now it's gonna start to curve back around in your mind, and you want to imagine it's going to go right over the net strap and then continue to move to the alley. Now, that might not be the actual flight path of the ball. It might be going over directly over the net a, a little earlier, but that's what I imagine so I can have the biggest hook possible so I can really make that ball move off the court. So if you want to make it really move off the court but keep it in the box, that's how you do it. And you also really time the release of your hips. If I release too early, I'm going to miss wide. If I hold it too long, I'm just going to put it in the middle of the box. I'm not going to get it to hook off the court. But if I release the hips at the right time and I have the right imagination, now I can get that ball to curve in the box. I get that ball to curve in the box. And then I can, once I get the feeling, I like ca call this radio dial shoulders. You know, the old school radio dials. A lot of people watching this video probably don't remember. I don't even know what I'm talking about. But way back in the day, you used to have to fine tune to find the right frequency so that the song played nicely. Okay, so if I think about those radio sh shoulder dials and I keep giving myself feedback, I can get that serve pretty close to the line and out wide. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going, okay. So that last serve is in the box, but I think I can get it closer to the line by opening and releasing the hips and the shoulders slightly earlier. Now, I did that. I released earlier, so I went wide. So I'm like, okay, somewhere right in the middle of that, and I've got it. Can I do it? Oh, yeah, I did it. That's how you can control your slice serve. Okay, so now that you know how to control your slice serve, now it's time to mess with your opponent's mind because everybody just kind of thinks of the slice serve as like, oh, it's just that out wide off the court serve. I love to think of a slice serve like a snowflake. What do they say about snowflakes? No two are exactly the same. And you can do that with your slice serve. You can hit so many different serves inside the box. You're never gonna have a serve that creates so much variety, so much safety, and so much confusion when you do it the right way. Just don't limit yourself to that out wide serve. Once you know, I just taught you how to control your hips. So once you do that, then you basically just tell yourself the amount of curve you wanna have on the ball and where you want that ball to bounce in the box. So you're gonna see 
based on, I'm just going to vary my release of my hips and you're going to see some go way off the court. You're going to see some go more deep in the box. You're going to see some go into the body. You're even going to see some go towards the middle of the box, towards the down the line, right? That middle up the T serve. You can do it all with the slice serve. And all you have to do now is focus on the hips, the shoulder, and the amount of cut you want to put on the ball. So watch this. See, that one went off the court. That one went more towards the middle of the box. That one more into the body. This one deeper into the box. You see that? Look at all that variety you can have. I'm also focused on how much I'm pushing through the ball. All right, so we're about to get to amazing thing number five. If you're still watching this video, please give this video a like. Okay, your fifth amazing thing that you're learning on this video in the complete guide to slice serves is how to hit a powerful slice. Lots of people, their slice goes too slow. And that is because they're aiming at the wrong part of the ball. You're focused on cutting the ball, but you end up cutting the bottom of the ball, or you end up cutting it maybe here. If I'm a, uh, I'm a lefty, that would be nine o'clock. For you as a righty, maybe you're cutting it at three o'clock. What you want to do is you want to focus on getting towards the top outside of the ball, and you want to make sure that you don't come up on the ball like this. I see a lot of people, because they've never hit spin before, and they have that waiter tray position, they're coming at the, the ball like this, and from the bottom, and they end up hitting a lot of slicers like that. Super high, I'm exaggerating it, but you've definitely seen this at the club level where people are like slicing the ball kind of like that, okay? But when you watch the pros hit a slice serve, they can hit it quite hard, a lot faster than I can hit it, of course. But if I kind of like, imagine what the pros are doing, and I also wanna focus on my wrist getting right here, and I wanna think about really getting on top of that ball, okay? So even though you swing up at the ball, right? Just like a quarterback throwing a long bomb, you swing up at the ball, but it's kind of like two different ideas at the same time. You wanna swing up, you wanna get in the tilt, but you also wanna kind of feel like you're spiking down on the ball too with your wrist snap. If you do that correctly, you do those two things correctly, you get yourself in a deep tilt, but then you focus on hitting the top of the ball and almost feel like you're spiking it down to the other side Think of yourself like a pitcher throwing a curve ball from the top release point, but picturing that going down into the catcher's mitt. It's the same idea. And when I do that, I can hit a slice fairly fast there. You see that? That has slice, but it also is going through the court pretty quickly, okay? One more. Oh, that was a nice one. I'm gonna show you some of the balls coming in from the other side. Now look, I'm not even jumping, I'm not even warmed up. If I were to jump, all of a sudden, I'm adding another probably 10 to 15 miles an hour to this serve, easy. How quickly you can make that ball move away from the competition. Okay guys, so hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. B2 and I want to remind you to subscribe and like this video. Remember you get 100 free B2 puppy kisses every time you do. And don't forget to pick up my free copy of the seven day serve challenge. You're gonna love it if you wanna hit your serve harder, if you wanna master your toss, you wanna learn how to hit a kick serve, and if you wanna hit a serve over 100 miles an hour, then the seven day serve challenge is for you. B2, say goodbye.